Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com, and today your first look at Garmin's new secret ECG functionality on their Venue 2 Plus, or at least on this Venue 2 Plus. It's probably not on your Venue 2 Plus, at least not anymore. It used to be, but now it's it's kind of gone, and I'll explain why in just a second. First though, it's worthwhile noting this is the first time we've seen ECG on any Garmin device. Well, Apple and Samsung and Fitbit and everyone else out there has pretty much done ECG at this point. This is the first time we've seen it on a Garmin device and seen it actually working in action. But it's not not the first time we've heard about Garmin and ECG. In fact, last spring and last summer, Garmin recruited about five, 600 people to do a study with their wearables. It was presumed the Venue 2 at the time or the Venue series uh, using ECG and doing that study in a very clinical way. In fact, it's actually filed with, as a clinical study for ECG and testing a couple different things that included not only the accuracy compared to medical grade equipment, but also the identification of certain different patterns. But first I figure I'll show you this thing actually working. So I got a Venue 2 Plus right here with the ECG app. And on this side over here, I have the Apple Watch Series 7, also with this ECG functionality. Uh, I'm going to simply show you this here. I'm going to go ahead and take the watch. I'm going to put it on. And there we go. Boop. Nothing crazy, nothing too tight or anything like that. Just kind of like normal watch uh, snugness, if you will. Now, it's worth noting, of course, this is not the final ECG app. This is actually just one of the diagnostic and service menus. In fact, if I tap through the menus here, you see the different ones for the display diagnostics and backlight, the GPS test and heart rate, uh, the accelerometer as I shift. These are all just different menus on the watch, AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart and the barometric altimeter and Wi-Fi and optical heart rate, NFC, vibration. I mean, it goes on and on and on. But eventually, we get away back to the ECG test right there. This is the ECG uh, diagnostic app. And if I go ahead and I use my fingers and I touch it, it will go ahead and start reading. You got to give it a couple seconds to do that uh, and it'll eventually stabilize. And there we go. We can see it's now stabilized and showing my ECG. Now the challenge of course is there's no way to save these results right now because again it's a diagnostic app. It's never been designed to be seen by the general public. In fact in Garmin's ideal world we would never have known about this uh, because by the time you install final production software on this it goes ahead and wipes this out. The challenge though is that Garmin like every other company out there has to produce units ahead of time for many many months prior to release. In the case of the Venue 2 Plus this released the first week of January 2022 which means they were likely building units for probably between two and three months ahead of time. Now during that time period they left this in the diagnostic menus for whatever reason and that means that on those units that were then shipped out to the rest of the world that diagnostic menu is still there. So when I went ahead and bought this unit just off the shelf like any other consumer uh, that diagnostic menu is still there at least until I update the watch for the first time. Once I update the watch the diagnostic menu disappears like a fart in the wind and you'd never know about it except for someone on Garmin's own forums. Uh, back the very first week of February someone posted that they accidentally got in the menu on their watch and they're trying to set it up or something and they stumbled into this. But they didn't have any proof on it at the time. They didn't actually publish anything about it. Of course given the lack of photographic proof I did the only logical thing I could do. I went out and bought a brand new unit just for science I guess and that's how I got to this right here. So then the question is is this accurate? Well I don't know I'm not like a cardiologist but I can show you exactly what goes on on the Apple Watch Series 7 and how it looks on that one and show you them side by side. So here's that watch. We'll go crack into the ECG menu. There we go, right there. Boom. Hold the finger to the crown and it starts. Now to me and the untrained eye here, these look pretty darn similar. Uh, obviously Garmin's is the raw data and Apple's is the kind of filter data, the smooth data in this graph right here, as well as the app around it. Uh, but the underlying structure of that particular pattern does look the same. And of course, at the end of Apple's test, they not only show you that it's a normal sinus rhythm, uh, it doesn't show any signs of AFib. And then from there, this data is saved into your uh, phone. You can send it off to your doctor and all that kind of stuff. And those are pieces that undoubtedly Garmin would have on their official app, which again, this is not their official app. I want to say that like many, many times here, because I know someone will look at this and go, oh, it doesn't look the right. It doesn't look, it's, it's diagnostic data. That's, that's the point of this sort of thing. It was just sort of accidentally left in there. Now we can poke at it and see what Garmin's plans are. Now, speaking of their plans, let's talk about that in relation to the study they did last summer. Uh, so this study is totally visible within federal databases because I filed it there. Uh, so you can see it was first opened and submitted last April of 2021. Over the course of the summer they recruited some 568 people. They initially planned only 460 people and then a portion of those would have AFib and a portion would not and they try to be identify which portion were which within the study. The study clearly lists what the purpose is. I'll put it on the screen right now. Uh, to confirm the Garmin ECG software algorithm can detect and classify 
atrial fibrillation, and normal sinus rhythm on a single lead ECG data derived from a Garmin wrist-worn consumer device. And then I'll go ahead and compare that data to a known clinically validated device. Now, of course, this would ultimately likely end up with Garmin submitting their paperwork uh, to be certified as a medical device. Now, technically speaking, these are part of the FDA's uh, software as a medical device program, which means they can certify just a portion of this as opposed to having to certify the entire watch and all of its features. So they're only certifying, for example, uh, just the ECG functionality, but not all of heart rate or not all of the blood pulse oxygenation bits or not all of respiration rate, just ECG. Anyways, back on this study, they were doing this with six different research partners over the course of last summer and last fall. They concluded it last fall. You can also see the entire test protocol listed as well. I'll put it on the screen there, though it's kind of hard to read. I'll link it down below the study in case you want to dig into it a little bit, uh, but it's all there too. Now, at this point, I went back to Garmin and said, yo, this is on your watch. What's the dealio? To which they said, nothing, nothing, honey. That's, that's nothing at all. In fact, they actually, they did give me a statement. It took a little bit of prying, but I did get a statement out of them. This is from Mary Woodbury, who's their PR lead for the wellness division. So that covers the venue and some of their health uh, ventures and stuff like that. Uh, and she said, quote, Garmin has conducted a clinical trial to assess the capability of our smartwatch to accurately detect the presence of AFib. The details of the study can be found on clinicaltrials.gov. End quote end of anything they were willing to say about the trials or about the watch. And there's good reason for that. The trials, of course, are public knowledge. They're seen up there. You can go and onto the site itself and look at them in the clinical trials database as required by U.S. law. Any trial that occurs in the U.S. with human subjects has to be published up there uh, somewhere in that database. Eventually, that'll have to include the details of the study itself in terms of success and that kind of things. But for now, it just has to simply say that study exists. The next piece is the device itself. And Garmin can can't legally, in the U.S. anyways, acknowledge the existence of a medical device that's not yet approved. Uh, given ECG is classified as a medical device by the FDA in the U.S., that means if they were to acknowledge the existence of that device before FDA approval, that gets them in some serious hot water. And we know that Garmin, generally speaking, is a very fiscally and legally conservative company, uh, and there is no way at all they're going to upset any portion of that Apple cart to even acknowledge that this exists at all. And when we look at other companies, for example, like Apple and Fitbit, when they've announced the ECG capability, it's after their FDA approval. Keep in mind, we have the clinical trial time period that went from uh, last spring until last fall. And then from there, that'll then go segue into eventually an FDA submission and an FDA approval. And then once they have their final FDA approval from the government, at that point, they can acknowledge the existence of the device. And that's in the case what happened with Apple back in 2018. In their case, they received the FDA approval about two weeks prior or so. And then from there, there was still another few months until it became available on your watch itself. If you look at the clinical trials between Apple and Garmin, they were pretty similar in their overall size of participants, uh, all between 550 and 600 people. Uh, the durations, Garmin's was a little bit longer than Apple's, uh, but that makes sense given they're trying to recruit people in the middle of COVID versus Apple's was in 2018. From there, in Apple's case, it's about five months between the conclusion of their data gathering uh, to their FDA approval. Uh, and so we don't know the exact timing within that window as to what things happen. But again, keep in mind that was 2018 versus 2022, and things will undoubtedly take longer now than they will have back then. Now, it's important to keep in mind, we may never see ECG on the Venue 2 Plus. I would definitely not buy the Venue 2 Plus thinking ECG is coming anytime soon, or even at all for that matter. Uh, number one, perhaps the hardware doesn't meet the requirements of what they wanted or, or what the uh, clinical trials assessed for. That's certainly an option. Number two, it's plausible Garmin might not actually pursue FDA certification uh, of this particular iteration of the hardware and software package. Uh, they might not then receive FDA certification. And even if they receive FDA certification, that does not imply they're going to apply for certification with other regulatory bodies outside of the US. Uh, for example, in Europe or other countries. If we look at Apple, for example, they started off that regulatory clearance in the US and they moved to Europe, they went to other countries beyond that. But there are even countries today that do not yet have the ECG app available on your Apple Watch in those countries because they do not yet have regulatory approval in those countries. And in some cases, Apple simply hasn't applied for approval in those countries because the user numbers, whatever the case may be, don't justify it. Still, it's very clear that Garmin is working on this. Obviously, they have the clinical trial, they have the hardware here. Uh, it's just only a matter of time before they eventually do probably submit for FDA approval, receive that approval, and we start seeing it in Garmin devices. But again, I wouldn't buy this watch for ECG functionality today. With that, if you found this video interesting and useful, whack that like button. It really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Or consider subscribing. There is plenty more wearable and sports technology goodness on the way here pretty shortly. With that, have a good one.